Hi, my name is Jordan Boss with Insight Global. We are a staffing firm based out of Atlanta, Georgia with 58 offices across the country. Thank you so much for having me be a part of your internship program. Today, we are here to talk about how to create the perfect elevator pitch. Before we get into it, just want to talk a little bit about myself and my credentials. As I mentioned, my name is Jordan Boss with Insight Global. I'm part of the talent acquisition team. I've been in the company for about six years, part of the TA team for the past five years. And the TA team, our job is to hire for the company internally. So every single person that works here has been involved in the interview process with a TA. So we attend career fairs, do in-person interviews, on-campus interviews, phone interviews. So of everybody, we've heard the most elevator pitches in the country. Uh, probably thousands and thousands, I would say, probably about 10 a day. So we really have great insight, no pun intended, into how good an elevator pitch is and what makes up a good elevator pitch. So today we're definitely here to talk about how to create the perfect one. So let's get right into it. First, what is an elevator pitch? Well, simply put, it's a brief introduction about yourself and your experiences. This is the answer to the big question, tell me about yourself, which I'm sure you've been worried about since you first started interviewing. Uh, it should be about 30 seconds or less. That's why it's called an elevator pitch. You should be able to deliver this pitch to somebody while you're in an elevator with them, which is probably about, I would say, 30 to 60 seconds. So short, sweet, to the point about yourself and your experiences. And really, a pitch is the same thing as a sell. So you really want to sell yourself in this opportunity in front of this employer. This is the chance to get them excited about continuing the conversation or interview process with you. Think about it like a taste, a preview. It's a short synopsis of who you are and you want them to keep reading. So definitely get them enticed, get them on the hook and have a strong elevator pitch, especially because you're going to a great school with a lot of candidates that might have a similar resume, background, GPA is you. So a great elevator pitch is a way to separate yourself from the pack. And also you want to give insight on what you want to convey to each employer. So really highlight the transferable skills such as time management, able to overcome adversity, having a good work ethic, those things that will relate to the job you really wanna get through on your pitch. So now that we know what an elevator pitch is, we should work on when to use it. And there are a lot of different ways to use it. Um, I wrote down a couple here. I'm sure there are other opportunities to use it, but number one, on a resume in that about me section or in that LinkedIn bio at the top of your page, you can definitely have that in there. So anyone visiting your page or looking at your resume can get your elevator pitch without you even having to talk about, about them. Sometimes you might wanna condense it a little bit on a resume or a LinkedIn bio, but you can definitely have that in there for sure. Also at a career fair, you're meeting tons of employers at different booths. So walking up to them and delivering your elevator pitch is a great way to also practice or use your elevator pitch. And then a phone or in-person interview. They're definitely gonna ask, tell me about yourself or give me a rundown on your background. And that's when you can use your elevator pitch over the phone or in person. One small note is you do wanna alter your elevator pitch depending on the situation you're in. For example, you might have a longer LinkedIn bio elevator pitch rather than a resume because you wanna condense space as I mentioned, or you might not answer the phone off a phone call and start your elevator pitch. You might want to have some small talk first. So being able to adjust and use it in certain situations, but definitely it can apply to a multitude of situations to use your elevator pitch. So let's get right into it. Part one of your elevator pitch should be who you are, which is a sentence or two describing your background, short sweep to the point about your name, what year you are in school, your major. That's about it. As I mentioned, it should be about a sentence or two. For example, Hi, my name is Kemba Walker. I'm a junior here at the University of Connecticut studying communication. As I mentioned, this is just the first part of your elevator pitch. Don't overthink it too, too much. Um, but when you are in person, make sure that when you start your elevator pitch, great smile, firm handshake, good eye contact. Those are things that are very important that starts off your interview. This is first impression, and this is the first impression of the first impression. So really make sure that you have a strong opening for your elevator pitch. Even if you're on the phone and starting your elevator pitch, still smile, still have good energy. That tone can really be told in, uh, over the phone. Part two of your elevator pitch, what you do. This is the meat and potatoes of your elevator pitch. Should be about two to three sentences that describe an experience you wanna share. This could be your internship experience, Greek life, athletics, organizations and clubs that you're involved with on campus. Maybe there's something that is not involved with school but really speaks to who you are. For example, if you are an Olympic pole vaulter, mention that in your elevator pitch. This is the part. You also wanna be able to explain what skills you developed that you're taking with you from those experiences into your career. For example, if I was the president of student government for UConn, I'm gonna mention how I'm able to public speak, 
I am able to delegate tasks. I'm able to, you know, get my peers together and hold them accountable. Those are great things that I can take with me into my career that employers really are going to want to know about. That's Kemba Walker. We're using him as, as an example. Not going to the MBA in this PowerPoint. He is definitely going to apply for jobs and go obviously be a senior. Uh, so maybe his example would be in my three years at UConn, I've been a starter on the basketball team, being a captain for the past two seasons. I've learned teamwork, time management, and how to use my competitiveness in a positive, healthy way. I've also had two sales internships, which have developed my people skills and ability to handle rejection. Right there, he's explaining to me so much about who he is in just a few sentences, which makes me, as the employer, want to learn a lot more about him and continue the conversation. Now that I've stated who I am, what I've done, and the transferable skills that I'm going to take with me into my career, part three is what you want to do. This is your call to action showing employers what your objective is. Um, you should start your sentences off by saying, I'm seeking, I'm looking for, I'm transitioning into. Things like that are going to show them, meaning the employer, what you're looking for and what you want to get out of this. Without this, they're going to say, cool, you're the basketball captain. What's next, right? So you really want to have a strong call to action at the end of your elevator pitch to kind of progress the conversation in a specific direction. So also, you want to make sure that this direction aligns with the company and job you are speaking with. For example, if you are interviewing for a sales position, you don't want to end your elevator pitch by saying, I'm looking to apply to law school. It doesn't really fit the objective that the client or employer is looking for. Also, maybe you are looking to go to grad school, and this is what your elevator pitch is about for a grad school interview. You don't want to mention how you want to get in the workforce as soon as possible. Might not coincide with grad school. Maybe you can do both, but it might not be something that they really want to hear. So you're, you know, you know, what you do part three of your elevator pitch should really focus on what they want to hear. Also, that means adjusting it from interview to interview or from company to company. If it's a sales internship, talk about how your sales experience is going to benefit and you are looking for sales opportunities moving forward. If it's a marketing role, switch it up. If it's a nursing position, switch it up. So you always want to be flexible with your elevator pitch and you can really do that near the end of your elevator pitch in this part. For example, I'm seeking a sales internship for the summer so I can further develop my skills before graduation. It tells the employer what you're looking for and your purpose. So it's really important that you're able to do that. Um, side note, you can also ask a question or instead of your call to action. So you can say, you know, from the last part, hey, I, I know I have two sales internships, which has impacted my ability to think critically, handle rejection. By chance, do you offer sales internships? That dictates the conversation in a specific direction. Up to you if you want to use either one or both, but that's really how you would end a powerful elevator pitch. All three parts of my perfect elevator pitch, I want to put it all together. So if this is Kemba Walker, which of course I am, uh, you're saying, hi, my name is Kemba Walker. I'm a junior here at the University of Connecticut studying communication. In my three years at UConn, I've been a starter on the basketball team, being a captain for the past two seasons. I have learned teamwork, time management, and how to use my competitiveness in a healthy way. I have also had two sales internships, which I have developed my people skills and ability to handle rejection. I am seeking a sales internship for the summer so I can further develop my skills before graduation. Once again, you want to make sure that this is everything about you, who you are, you feel comfortable saying it, and you feel confident saying it in front of employers. But simply put, this should be 30 seconds or less that explains who you are, what you're about, and what you're looking for, and your objective. Elevator pitch. It's time to go over the do's and don'ts when preparing to talk in front of people. So starting with the do's, and just to be completely transparent, do's and don'ts is usually going to be the opposites, right? Um, but getting to the do's, number one, be confident. You want to have great energy when you're delivering your elevator pitch. Not to say I need you to be a cheerleader or chugging five Red Bulls before you do this, but having a great natural energy is going to convey confidence to your employer, which makes you feel that much better of a candidate. You also want to have great eye contact with your employer while you're doing it. Now, not staring them down, because that might be a little bit creepy, but really strong eye contact is going to help you just make a connection with that employer. And then also you want to be authentic. You know, this is your elevator pitch. It is who you are as a person. Not sounding robotic is very important. So sounding authentic, making it your own, and really knowing this elevator pitch backwards and forwards is really going to help you out. Knowing your audience as well. As I mentioned, you might want to have a couple different elevator pitches for different positions or industries that you're applying to. So knowing your audience and being able to use the right elevator pitch in the right circumstance is very important. And last, practice. We'll talk about this in the next slide a little bit, but having great practice makes perfect. Everybody knows that. On the don't side, Number one, don't look at your notes. That's not very good, especially if you're presenting in front of a person. You know, looking down, looking down makes it sound like it's not really your presentation. You're just reading it off your pitch. 
Also, don't talk too fast. That is my biggest thing I need to work on. I will admit it right now, but when you talk too fast, the employer is focused on, wow, this person talks very, very fast. They're not focused on the message you're delivering, or they might miss a part. Also, you don't wanna to be too robotic in your pitch. As I mentioned, you wanna be natural. You wanna be, be authentic. You know, if you're sounding too robotic, it doesn't sound like yours. And once again, they're gonna focus on that instead of the message you're trying to deliver. You also wanna, you know, not limit yourself to one elevator pitch. As we talked about before, having multiple is going to really help you out. And not saying you need completely different elevator pitches, but maybe changing the last sentence or maybe changing the experience you have to better fit what you're looking to apply for. And you don't wanna read off your entire resume. At the end of the day, as I mentioned, this is 30 seconds. This is that first chapter, that first taste. You want them to ask more and dig deeper and read the book, essentially. You don't want to tell them everything right off the bat because that's not what this is for. So those are the do's, those are the don'ts for an elevator pitch, specifically delivering your elevator pitch in person. Last slide, practice, practice, practice. Everybody knows this, but practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the more confidence you'll have in yourself when it is time to deliver that elevator pitch in person, especially at a career fair where you might be using multiple elevator pitches and you need to memorize each one. So the more you practice, the better. How do you practice? Practice all the time. You know, you want to rehearse in front of the mirror, in front of your roommate, on the car ride to work, in the shower. You know, even to your pet, you can rehearse, right? That's 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 Captain. That's mine. He's a great listener for sure. But you know, the more you can practice this in front of people, just even if it's yourself recording yourself, those are great ways to practice because you're going to realize if you're talking too fast, talking too slow. You know, if you're looking at a mirror, you're not looking at your notes. So the better you can do this, the better you're going to be when it is for real. And obviously, in the beginning, you can use your notes. You can look down. It's really hard to memorize right off the bat. So use your notes and then, you know, use portions, right? You know, get that first part done. Get that second part done. Get that third part done and then put it all together. So really, you want to practice your elevator pitch part by part and then put it all together so you don't need any notes whatsoever. Resources around you. You go to UConn. It's a great school and great university that's going to help you be successful in your career. Obviously, number one, the Career Center. You're doing that right now in this internship and with this workshop with elevator pitches. So the more you can utilize Career Center, not just for elevator pitches, but for mock interviews, resume critique, you know, those are really going to help you go a long way in your career. Also, using career coaches. It is literally their job to help you be successful. So using them, obviously, this workshop, as I mentioned, is really going to help you out. Also, using your colleagues. You're all doing elevator pitches. You're all using, you know, these techniques to be successful. You know, speak in front of them. Practice. Have them practice in front of you. Use parts of their elevator pitches. Use tips, techniques. That's going to really help you go a long way. And you can also use me. Obviously, I'm helping out with this presentation right now. But, you know, you can contact me off this. You know, we're doing a live Q&A pretty soon, I'm sure. So we can talk then. Uh, my email address, jordan.boss at insightmobile.com. Super easy. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I love LinkedIn. So, you have any questions you can use the career center career coaches your friends colleagues you know professors myself as well really you can use a lot of resources even to bounce things off or really you know just practice 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 that is the way to create and deliver your perfect elevator pitch as a quick recap make sure that you're able to sell yourself and make it as individual as possible and keep it under 30 seconds when explaining your experiences, make sure that you're able to describe transferable skills that an employer will really want in this position and end it with a straw call to action or question. When you're delivering your elevator pitch, be energetic, conversational, and rehearse it over and over again to make sure that it comes out perfect. Don't sound too robotic or read off your entire resume because there will be a time for that later. Lastly, use the resources around you at UConn to make sure that you are making the best of your perfect elevator pitch. Thank you so much and good luck.